Unite for America is a self-proclaimed multi-partisan movement of concerned citizens and volunteers united against the unprecedented threat of an unqualified candidate taking our nation's office. They brought together a group of celebrities to appear in a two and a half minute YouTube PSA. The video features actors Martin Sheen and Deborah Messing and more than a dozen other celebrities you may but probably won't recognize. Solemnly talking about the wisdom of the founding fathers, quoting from the Federalist and encouraging Republican members of the Electoral College to embrace the constitutional responsibility granted to you by Alexander Hamilton himself, which isn't how the Constitution works, but hey, these are just details. We have to save America. And being that I'm open to the idea of electors exercising independent judgment in dire circumstances, I don't find Unite for America's aim in principle offensive. After all, Thomas Jefferson did say that people cannot be all and always well informed. But one has to consider, was anyone there watching the election? Did anyone see the other failed similar PSA campaigns that also enlisted the use of elite celebrities? Because if there's one indisputable takeaway from 2016, it's this. No one gives a damn what the actor from Apocalypse Now thinks about politics. And Hillary Clinton enveloped herself in an unceasing haze of A-listers. Bon Jovi serenaded her on her campaign jet, and Katy Perry was a regular presence on the campaign trail, and at one point performing alongside Elton John, who declared Clinton America's only hope. The Democratic National Convention, slim on up-and-coming political talent, relied on red carpet glamour. Speakers included Meryl Streep, comedian Sarah Silverman, actresses Chloe Moretz, and singer Demi Lovato, and a bunch of other people we don't particularly care Care about. Broadway star Idina Menzel and actress Elizabeth Banks joined dozens of Hollywood billboard types to record an a cappella version of Rachel Platten's fight song, the Clinton campaign's theme song, which they unveiled at the convention, following a performance by Lenny Kravitz. Earlier in the cycle, Clinton had also appeared in the Comedy Central sitcom Rod City, and in the final days before the election, Beyonce and rapper husband Jay-Z performed at a Clinton rally in Cleveland. Respect matters to me. In other words, the Clinton campaign was a one-star studded photo op after the next, and it wasn't enough. If the left is interested in making some actual progress, they might want to take a lesson from that fact. Hillary Clinton could not overcome her unmitigated failure to connect with key voters by dazzling them with glamorous pals out in Hollywood. In fact, Clinton's reliance on glitzy endorsements turns out to have been a sign that she had no understanding of her political constituency. Left-wing turnout was not going to be propped up by a few more Lena Dunham web ads. What Clinton needed were white working class voters, and those people weren't likely to rally behind Beyonce with her $400,000 per month summer home. This year's key voting block was asking, who understands me? And Clinton's rolling Oscars after party sent precisely the wrong message. Fame can be an aid, as the left knows, from its crusade to normalize and ultimately remove legal prohibition against abortion, which was affected in no small part by Hollywood. But the Democratic Party has fallen disastrously out of touch with a large vocal segment of Americans who are less enamored with cultural progressivism than with competitive wages and jobs. And that's a sea of change from what used to be the working man's party that was particularly attentive to struggling and the down and out. It's become the party of Beverly Hills parties. It can't be both. And Republicans enamored with their own celebrity this year should keep that in mind too.